What is up, my friends, and welcome back to episode 109 of the Vegas Confessions Pod. Why are you making that face? <laughs> Podcast. I'm your host, Jay. And I'm Kelly. It's been a little bit. It's been a quick minute. How are you feeling? Better. Guys, we've been back and forth with trips. Baby girl got sick and was down for a good week. You came up with bronchitis, which I've never seen you that down and bad. Only when I had COVID. That one time oh, I had yeah, COVID, yeah. I was like, Bleh. Yeah, but this was longer, it felt like. Yeah. It just stretched out. But Well, because with COVID, I was just tired. Yeah, yeah. This, I mean, I had the full-on cough at night. Yeah. I couldn't breathe. Yeah. I mean, it was, well. So we're finally back. We've been getting back and forth from trips. It's literally been, I get back, you leave, and then you get back and I leave. And it's it was like that for a good month. So it's been- For the record, it wasn't on purpose. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I took my parents to Florida to watch Sid's kickoff of the season. Right. And then as soon as I got back, Julian had to leave for work to Vegas. <laughs> and then he was there until literally like a day before I took my parents back to Georgia <laughs> to watch a tournament of SIDS. And then I got sick the, the last two days of our Georgia trip. And once yeah. I got back, I was like nine days just just trucking it. And then finally I, I gave in and I called yeah. the doctor. And to make it even better, you're like, I want to record. I want to record. I'm like, I'm not recording with you like this. Yeah, and he's like, go ahead. Yeah, let's go record. <laughs> and he was like, no. No, not happening. <laughs> but... Uh, on the road to recovery, so we're trucking it, and we're getting through and going at it today. Let's do it. Let's do it. Hey there, everyone. This is Matt Bridger, and you are listening to the Vegas Confessions Podcast. Didn't we go to my favorite dive bar before that? We went yeah. to Double Down. Double Down Saloon. <laughs> yeah, we had some ash juice. I am all about asking. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go check that room. There's like a dead guy in the in the bed. And the, the lady at the counter says, well, we'll call housekeeping. It's <laughs> housekeeping. Jay's never met an asshole he didn't like. <laughs> Shout out to the guy at third base at the blackjack table I was at last, who was obviously trying to keep a high-low count, but was mouthing the numbers as the cards were being <laughs> turned <laughs> over. Be careful what you say, because we can have you whacked. Okay, I'm Nicky Furnish, and you're listening to the Vegas Confessions Podcast. So before we get started, we do got to give some special shout out to all of our Patreon members of the podcast. Eric Rosenthal, David Sowell, Rick D, Scott and Lisa, Scott J, Taylor Jew, Michael Traeger, Graham from the Chef Demoni Podcast, Joshua Palmer, Neil Macedo and Blaine Riff. Thank you, folks. So we got another shout out we have to mention as well. Yes. So as you guys know, like I work for this Vegas, New Vegas at Vegas near me. And my job is to listen to the podcast and timestamp everything. So I'm listening to podcasts all week long. And I have favorites now, I will admit. Yeah. <laughs> but I want to give a shout out to Food and Loathing, um, Al Mancini and his, his group over there. Um, it was awesome. I was listening to the podcast and they gave the, the new app, Vegas Near Me, the shout out and mentioned Julian and everything. And I was just so like excited. I'm like, babe, I want to give a shout out to them on the next episode. And so shout out to Food and Loathing. It was awesome. It's always awesome listening to you guys. I get so many good... Um, so much more knowledge listening to you on um, the restaurants and what they offer and what I, like I can almost taste just by the the, the way you describe your meals yeah. I can taste what you taste yeah and I what, mean, it's awesome what's great about them is not only is Al spot on with food and the food right. scene but he knows a lot of people he brings chefs on and great interviews right so they have another host on there. So, yes. And she's awesome as well with recapping some of the places. Right. And Rich, who also has a different style of food. Yeah, he, and he, he's more my, my, yeah, my yeah. take. He's a more quick, quick, fast foodie. Like, that's more me. Rich and I get all, would get along great. Say what I love about Rich is like, oh, went to Jackson's this week. <laughs> like, I love stuff like that because... Yeah. Those are the places that people don't get off the strip and right. away from downtown that we mention. Hey, these places are really worth your right. time and money. So, or even then they talk about getting stuff to take home and eat, like a feather blade, where you can get the best cuts of meat and things like that. Those are all great 
tidbits of knowledge to have if you're going to be in Vegas. The listeners of this podcast, you have no idea how turned on I am right now about feather bits and her dropping this. I don't even know what that one is. Feather blade. Dear. See, feather you see what blade. I mean? You see what I mean? This is the uniqueness of listening to all these different shows and creators who go so to these places. I know something about Vegas that he doesn't Yes, know. I he love so that. Totally so now nice. we're going to have to talk about that place. But <laughs> no, I love that aspect of it because we learn so much. Yes. And, and I'm pretty and, sure it's Samantha, Jim, and I Stevens, if I'm remembering correctly. I'm yes, to up, she's awesome. Yes. And, and what I love about them is... It's always a different place that they're going to. It's, and if you guys don't know, Al has an app as well, Neon Feast. Yeah. So he's got a bunch of restaurant recommendations and he covers the food scene, like we said, not only on the podcast, but on his app as well. Right. And, and it's anywhere from, you know, one star to five star. And right. as far as price point, anything from very cheap to very, very expensive as well. But, which is what I love is there's such a variety to choose from. You and, really can't go wrong. And what's super cool is a lot of people think, oh, all of this Vegas stuff is a competition. Well, here's another guy with an app. Here we are working with this app, right? Now both apps are going to work together and start cross-promoting one yeah, another. Yeah, from what you said, yeah. like George and Al got together and they went to it's some happening. Or something it's happening. It's happening right now. Yeah, that's They're, great. We're going to start cross-promoting Neon Feast. They're going to promote the Vegas Near Me app. And it just shows what this community is right. and how everybody's involved with just Vegas. And it doesn't Vegas. have to be a competition. You no, can hell no. Up. I love There's that. more than enough for yeah. everybody to step up and, and benefit succeed. yeah yes yeah. you know it's successful and help each other out there's more than enough places it's it's do. really cool and with again guys i say it all the time 43 million people visit this place right. yearly we only need a little chunk to make and be successful yeah. right like and, that's and every aspect if of more business people would go by that that aspect of help lift each other and not, don't step on other people yeah. to rise to the yeah. top Help lift each other up yeah. and let's rise together. So definitely yeah. shout out to the Food and Loathing guys. Yeah. They are awesome. The and podcast always, is it's great. It's always a fun listen, guys. Yeah. Always been, every week I look forward to Fridays because I know you're... It's reading. funny. You say you and Al are going to... Or you and Rich are going to click. Yeah. I know me and Al are going to hit it. You more A hundred percent. Even the way he talks though and he carries yeah. himself. I know we're going to hit it off well. Like yeah. that's crazy is just by listening and seeing certain people. Once you get to meet them, you already know know when because you guys you know, are going to jail. I'm not afraid to try things. Like oh, 100%. Some of the things, yeah. Some of the things like that Al tries. He eats, and goes through, yeah, a very oh, good, yeah. Not gonna happen, <laughs> not gonna happen, not gonna I, was, I was at the top of my trying scale at Esther's Kitchen Esther's when I brought kitchen, out this yeah. like, dessert that like didn't yes. look so edible. So good. And it yeah. did. It, yeah. I'll admit it tasted yeah. good, but I'm, I'm good with things I know taste good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? And which makes me even more excited because we're getting ready to go back and we're going to go try some good tasting stuff <laughs> that you haven't tried yet. So I'm super stoked. But yes, definitely not only check out Food and Loathing, but check out their app as well because yeah, they got a really good app. It's food specific. And again, different places that are not only strip and downtown focused. Right. They have Tivoli Village, different places right. around town that you'll benefit from. Just like the Vegas Near Me app, they're out there doing the work, recommending places that you should take time and go to. Right. That's exactly what we're doing. I love and that. And you know what I love as well is like, even even some of the experiences, they're not all 100%. And he's the first to admit they're not 100%, yeah. but he, does, he doesn't criticize. He constructively says, I'm going to try it again, but this just wasn't my right. cup of tea this right. time. And you he's know, super so authentic. Really yeah, you authentic know, so as that, hell. Yeah. That's important. You're, Genuine, yes. You don't float their boat if it's sinking. Yes. You know what yeah. I mean? So yeah. he, he tells it like it is, which yeah. I appreciate. Yep. Because as a listener and as a consumer who's going to go spend their dollar, you want to know his honest take on it. And I know we're talking about this a little more in length than we anticipated. Yeah, but, but shout out to Fugno. But no, seriously, <laughs> that's what I like about them. And because yeah. so many people go to Vegas for food, this is a yeah, really good foodies. recommendation. Yeah. yeah, so definitely check them out for the food part of Vegas because yeah. they, they know their stuff. So another few quick ones to mention, just real fast. Nick, Mike, Matt, Raul, Jack, Steve, Jill, Stu, and Sue, Jordan, everybody I saw this trip. Just you freaking awesome. A lot of people. You so a lot of many stuff. people. But it's you always awesome. Do. I love that. He like, worked, like work, it's half working, half networking working at night. So his days aren't eight hours there. They're like <laughs> 16 to 18 hour days and then I would have to remind him I'd be like you need to sleep and at some point you need to sleep he's like so I gotta go here and they invited me here and I hate if they invite me I hate to say no or I hate to not show up and I'm like but you have to sleep yeah it's true it happens yeah one I have to mention I always get 
recognized in restrooms, which is weird, right? So I'll be okay. taking a piss, right? Hey, Look over and somebody's like, hey, Jay, like you're the YouTube guy, right? <laughs> it's so funny. The weirdest and funniest one happened this past trip. I was at Golden Gate getting ready to head back to Plaza to head to the car. So I stop, I take a leak. This guy looks over, right? And he's like, oh, dude, what's up? He's like, dude, can I just tell you, like, I've elim eliminated a lot of YouTubers and different channels, but you're one of my favorites, dude, because you're just so real. Like, I love that about you, right? I'm like, I appreciate that, man. That means a lot. I, I, I really do appreciate it. And he's trying to shake my hand, right? I'm like, no, no, no. Yeah, right? I'm like, no, no, no. And so not only am I laughing because he's drunk, right? And I don't... I'm, I, I'm getting a kick out of him. I'm not touching his hand though. And so we're now, we're now washing our hands. Right. And so he's like, dude, and this is where the funniest part came up. He's like, dude, I love your channel and how you're always just walking around and doing stuff. And he's like, laughing lion i love your channel bro and i just thought to myself boy this guy's gonna be really disappointed when he realizes i'm not the laughing lion kinzo shout out to kinzo <laughs> <laughs> it's like you have a great night bro it's great meeting you though yeah that's hilarious he thought i was the laughing lion which is one of the bigger channels super good guy kinzo good friend but yeah i thought that was just hilarious i'm like this guy's gonna be super disappointed when he wakes up Hell no, I didn't Impossible correct them. No, no, no. Okay. Hell no. I'm not going to do that. Okay. He's having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> so another one to mention are the Swifties. Taylor Swift is in town yeah. and they are in full effect. And, you know, like you're talking about the merch, but I had heard something like for like three days in a row she's broken some streaming record. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so, I mean, so she is getting she, it. So she's up there with like the numbers of BTS, right? Well, what not, about her merch? I so, yeah, about the merch. that's what I wanted to talk, cap on is... There's a three, four hour line wrapped around the parking lot of Allegiant Stadium just to buy merch. And people are lined out there for up to four hours waiting in line just to get this stuff. Every single video clip that I've seen so far from Travel Ruby and Dana from the Vegas Revealed podcast packed with people. I Which mean, it's just nuts to me because if you've ever been to a concert, you know how high merchandise yeah. Oh, yeah, 100%. is there. Yeah, 100%. You know how, how the market. costly yeah, right. it is. Yeah. I mean, it's almost three times more than you'd find anywhere yeah. else. So craziness that you still have a three to four hour <laughs> wait to buy the super expensive stuff yeah. from there. And plus, both concerts were sold out. Yeah. But I mean, the first reviews and, I saw And they're doing it again next weekend. It's going to be How fabulous crazy. she was. Yeah. And, it, you know, yeah. it was, they said like 44 songs, a three yeah. hour concert yeah. by her. There's like, a clip, babe. They said that she was awesome. I think it was Dana's clip. She dives off the stage and then comes up in a different outfit. No way. Yeah. Like, I'm like, holy shit. Like, it was quick, like, instant. And you know how they do that. Right. But she literally dove off the stage into her, like, this pit area she has. Dove off the stage, came back up in a different outfit. I'm like, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Like, that's pretty neat. But yeah, there, there's a lot of spectacle. There's like people riding around on lit up bikes and stuff right. like that on and the they, stage. They showed one part of her like practicing when mm -hmm. she got there, and there was a a thing in part of the stage. She goes under the stage and she gets into like a tube like structure, and it shoots her to the other end of the stage. <laughs> really? Yes. <that's>, <laughs> I had like, no idea. I don't know. Though. I mean, that's a that's a performer. That's, yeah, that's yeah. Somebody who stands yeah. up and sings yeah. for an hour and a half. Yeah, that that's pretty cool. A performance. So I mean. I'm sure these people yeah. got their money's worth. Yeah. Speaking of performers, the UConn basketball team's been performing oh. their ass off, right? And, and on an uphill road, from yeah. what I understand. I mean, totally these poor guys. One poor thing yeah. after another, but they have persevered. Yeah, a hundred percent. So let's cap a little bit of what they've been going through. So they've been winning their way out, right? They're but now. When they get there, what happens? So they get there, and the NCAA sets up all the hotel stays okay. for everybody. They were booked at Luxor. They had to be moved from Luxor because the hotel situation was so bad. Dirty, vomit on the floors. The people that had stayed there prior had just kind of partied their ass off. It smelled like weed and cigarettes. They had to be relocated to a different property. Then a few days later, and mind you guys, they win the game outright. Right. Following day, after moving, they go to play their next game. Items are stolen off their charter bus that they were on that got them over to the game from iPads to personal items. 
Like, how in the hell does this happen, right? Yeah, that's nuts. These guys still winning. Yeah. <laughs> the coach was on this morning. He's talking about such a phenomenal time they're having. Everybody's been super gracious to them. <laughs> and he's like, at this point, all we got to do is win this out. And I'm thinking to myself, they're going to win this thing and never come back. Like, yeah. these poor guys, are, the it's West Regional is just not working out in the best for them. But they continue to win. They right. just beat and took down Gonzaga. And they're rolling four seed and just working their way through it. And like, man, way to, you know, not get distracted with everything else and just keep going and focusing. Because like anybody on on that kind of a playing field, you're already stressed enough because you know you're on the biggest stage. Yeah. Yes. You know, know, there's millions of people watching the games, Mm -hmm. you know, like you have pressure on you already. But then to add personal pressures of, you know, not having, having, you know, good hotel facilities into yeah. personal items being stolen <laughs> right before your game or, you know what I mean? Like to have added stresses yeah. from the outside world, adding to just being on a national stage is crazy. Yeah. But for them to persevere, good for them, go UConn. Yeah. You know? And let's talk about crazy. <laughs> Recently, two dead people were found. Yeah. I mean, that's just, and not just people found deceased but yeah. in crazy ways I mean, yes. because people die every day you know in vegas but they were just different so the first right? lady was found at the airport 23 days later after parking in short-term in park. short-term parking yeah. I read. yeah so not even like you would, you know in my mind i'm thinking like short-term parking like somebody would go give you a ticket yeah. after so many days yeah you right know? right but apparently yeah maybe, that maybe it's for maybe some reason. Maybe like short-term parking is less than 30 days. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, but I don't know. I'm but, not sure either. I thought it was like seven days or less for short-term. So then it gets to the other story where a guy who's playing blackjack at the win. This was, one's even scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one's even So the guy's more playing peculiar. blackjack at the win, and he slumped over, and he didn't get checked on until he's, they started noticing discoloration in his skin. Turns out he had had a heart attack. And so now the family's suing Wynn, but which that's a whole different story. Yeah, I don't I don't think that's they said he wasn't checked on for how long? Twenty minutes, it said. That's crazy. Like to be at and that's what we talked about a little bit. Yeah. To be at a blackjack table where there is interaction, yeah. you know, like yeah, personal right. interaction, right. like usually every hand mm-hmm. for somebody just to let him be for that long. Cause like you know, when we were discussing it, I was like, I can see it a slot machine because a lot of people, if you're just playing, they leave you yeah, alone. Right. They don't come you know, Mm -hmm. tap you on the shoulder, like, do you need a drink or, you know, whatever. But if you're playing blackjack, that's kind of a different story because you you have personal interaction almost every minute. Well, and it's different. And then on top of that, you have the pit bosses and the cameras, everybody staring at you. I mean, I fell asleep at the blackjack right. table at Jerry's Nugget, yeah. and it was just for a couple seconds. Oh, yeah, yeah I woke up. Like, whatever. I woke I up and realized that. I had to play again. <laughs> Should dealer asked me if I was ready. Yeah, right. but that's different. That's not... Right. The win, which is a nicer right. property, one of the more upscale places, probably. It's just very interesting how it happened because I would, I would love to see the videotape review, but just curious if he really didn't look like he was having a medical something happen, you know. And there's also the case to be argued with, you know, people who drink and then pass out at the chair. Right. That, that's one thing. Then they call security, but they found this guy and it was just too late, too late. Right. And yeah, so totally different story. I think we talked a little more in detail on the Patreon side recently about, you know, the family and the case and how that's all right. going to uphold. So if you want to listen to more about that, you can check out our Patreon versions that we just released covering some of these same topics, but we went in more depth. Correct. Yeah. So let's talk about this new quote unquote food court that was just added over at New York, New York. Now they have a food court and it's got like a Nathan's famous hot dogs and it's over on the second floor by the arcade and the roller coaster area. Mm-hmm. They just added a whole different little food court over over on the opposite side of the casino, right by Coyote Ugly up on the second floor and a poor 24 bars up there. There's even like a Vegas store where the big Vegas sign is. They just added this new food court with three different options in there. It's got a wing zone, a Capriati sandwich shop, and this New York pizzeria. This is what caught my attention about this New York pizzeria. The pizza didn't look that great, yeah. okay, for starters. The price for a full pepperoni pie, which blew my freaking mind, $45. And you're like, no, that's about right. I'm thinking to myself, how in the hell is that about right? A full pie for $45, but if you want a deal, this is their deals. Two slices and a tall can for 30 bucks. 
That's the deal that they run there. Or if you want a soda instead of the beer, it's two slices and a small fountain drink for $21. Wow. Yeah. I'm like, this is not going to go. So I didn't even bother tasting the damn pizza. Yeah. You know, it didn't look the greatest. The only thing that looked like, oh, my How God. the slices? They were they? big. They're the big fat slices. It's yeah. New York style. For $45 <laughs> a fucking pizza. Right. Okay. Come on. There's plenty of options. There's yeah. way cheaper options. And I was like scratching my head. Well, maybe that's their opening prices and they're trying to get, catch something in the yeah. beginning. But 45 bucks. Yeah, that's a lot. That, when there was a pizza spot you're talking about that it closed now, but they were open recently. For yeah. Yeah. So we'll, throw, we'll talk about that one as well. That's the Pizza d'Italia that's over at the Showcase Mall. And it's... Two pizzas and a soda for two, five two bucks. Slices. Two slices, and yeah, of okay. cheese. And it didn't last for long. And right? it didn't last. Yeah. I think I put the video out about it. It was maybe great. less than a month. No, it wasn't. You said like great. if you're drunk, it would. Yeah, do, yeah, yeah. I mean, anything like, will do. That would really hit the spot quality. if you're drunk and walking and need something. But I think still the best pizza deal remaining in Las Vegas is going to be over at Metro Pizza. That's got to be the it standout. Down, right? Yeah, that's got to be the standout deal because. The pizza is not only delicious, they're really big slices like we were just right. talking about. And it's every Thursday, it includes slices and whole pies. And they're pretty big slices. Right? Really big yeah. slices. Yeah, it's a really good deal. That's still my standout deal when it comes to pizza in Vegas. So since we're talking about pizza, this segues way perfectly into the next part. I found my new favorite slice on the strip. Now, mind you, I've been to Francesca's, I've been to Giordano's, I've been to Secret Pizza, I've been to Siracos, I've been to Pinup Pizza, I've tried them all. Secret Pizza. I've pizza. tried them all, right? Yeah. My new standout pizza. Now, this one is quality, right? So you're going to pay for quality. It's a $10 slice, and it's located in the Aria. This is not Pizza Aoki, which I tried at the new food court at Proper Eats. This pizza shits on that pizza. Really? This pizza is from... Moneyline Pizza. Inside of Aria, this pizza was $10, babe. I tried two slices, a regular pepperoni, and I tried the other one. I think it was 12 It was like a meat lover slice. Okay. Phenomenal. Really? Sauce, size, everything. Crust was just on the money. And I thought to myself instantly, first bite, this is my new favorite pizza. I have heard people mention this place. The guys over at Crap Vegas talk about this pizza. Um, I think I've even heard Scott mention it on his podcast recently. This place does not disappoint. We're going to stop by there to have a slice. The best pizza on the strip. Secret Pizza doesn't even touch this. It's not even a second close second. It's it's so delicious. I don't know if I can cheat on Pop-Up. Pop-Up's great, but it's not on the strip. <laughs> True. I'm focusing on the strip. Okay. Yeah, this is the okay. best strip pizza. I've been to all of them. So Moneyline will be my mistress? Moneyline is going to be your challenge. Be my mistress. <laughs> yeah, so Moneyline Pizza, definitely worth a visit. So next, one night over at El Cortez, I noticed they removed all the high limit tables, which was three of them, and now they put all slots in. So just kind of going to prove that slots is king when it comes to the casino floor. Yeah. Yep. So no more tables there. Well, especially if you're looking. El Cortez. They probably have more slot players than table game players. Well, and yes. that casino specifically has a whole middle section of table gaming. Right. So plenty of it there. Right. And they even added one of those new claw machines that everybody has on the casino floors now. They have one too. So if you're looking for that, that's there. So one of the following days, I ended up over in Henderson, over on Water Street. Now this is where the Emerald Island Casino is and some of the smaller casinos, the the past that they talked about bringing in the new hotel that's going to be over there. I stopped at this place called Street Burger. Super chill spot. There's an upstairs dining like brew dog has. Um, and this food was really good. I just went there for lunch one day and oh my God, babe. They do burgers. They had like the portion sizes are off the chains, but the food is really, really good. And one of those that you know, probably go back for it just because a good experience. Real clean, looks newer actually. The whole building itself, yeah. everything looks new. And just decor inside, bunch of like graffiti and writing, pretty cool spot. Um, yeah, but I was blown away by the food itself. We're in the Water Street area. And I love that area because it's just 
not the strip, not downtown, right, totally chill downtown. environment. Yeah, so I want to take you there too. That's a really cool area to check out. Nice. That's where you went with our friend from Ellis Island, right? Yeah, so we have a good friend and works at Ellis Island, deals over there, and we met up for lunch over there and always good time catching up with her. So yeah. that was awesome. Good people. Yeah, very good people. While in town, I visited two different conventions, which I had no plans on visiting, and ended up at these places by a recommendation of a new friend named Mike. He was part of the DJ and booth convention, photo booth convention they were having there at the South Point, and ended up inviting me to another one that was happening a couple of days later. Once he knew I was working with the app and telling people right. about him, he's like, he's like, dude, you have to go to these conventions. There's plenty of people there to talk to. Everybody's a tourist. Like, this is perfect, Jay. You and should you go. And not only ended up at one convention, but two. I, so yeah, I ended up talking to a bunch of different people yeah. and at the second convention, which was at the Las Vegas Convention Center, I'd never been there. Right. So the first day was funny because I was going to come home that day after. And then I'm like, you know what? As I was leaving, I noticed there was a whole different section that I didn't even see. Right. And I'm like, oh, shit, I got to come back. Right. So this thing was huge. And while walking around, I have the backpack and stuff, which displays the Vegas near me. app. So a bunch of people were asking about the backpack. Well, one of the last days, one of the show managers comes up and she's like, hey, I just had a few questions about your backpack. Some of the people are concerned that, you know, it's advertising. And yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. I said, well, here's what it is. It's a new app. And I started explaining it, showing it to her. Here's what you can do. And I'm targeting all the tourists and stuff that may not know where to go looking for food places to eat and stuff. Now it's available to them all for free. And she looks at me dead in the face and she's like, you know what? I'm sorry I even bothered you. I said, no, what happened? She was like, there was just some folks concerned that maybe you were advertising. And she's like, can I ask what booth you're with? I go, I'm not with the booth. I'm just here to come again, spread the word, talk to people, let people know about this free app. And she's like, just keep doing your thing. You're great. She's like, I'll go talk to all of them. You just keep doing it. She's like, let me see her. She downloaded the app on the spot. Like, it was really cool. I was like, yeah. it went from the moment of I'm getting kicked out of this thing to, okay, you're good, right? So, yeah, well, I had what it is. It's like, and you're not selling anything. No, right. You're yeah, really right. You're just trying to get word of mouth out yeah. of what a valuable piece of right. an app world. This is a valuable piece of real estate that is so useful to anybody right. that is either in Vegas for visiting or local. And it's so funny to get the stance from, what are you doing to, ah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And so when I see that transition, it's always like, hey, by the way, what's your favorite place? Right. And so then they, she told me her favorite place and I looked it up and showed her how the app right. works. She's like, oh, this is really cool. Like really cool. I, and so she was and like, I want- It's amazing because literally but it, it zero come, people have yeah. said, oh, it's okay. No, yeah, nobody, yeah, Everybody's ever, yeah. they flabbergasted They're like, about the how biggest, much is it. The biggest question I can kept getting was is this available for my city or right. is it only for Vegas? And like, yeah, it's only for Vegas. So they're like, damn, like this is not New York. Right. Everybody kept asking me that. As soon as I showed them the, this app, they're like, can I use this in Florida? Yeah. Like, no, you can't right now, but that's really our goal. Is. It's an all yeah. in one. Like if yeah. you're in a city and you're not familiar with and you're like, what to do? Mm -hmm. Some some cities, like yeah. when I was in Florida, had, you know, in your hotel, the pamphlets of, oh, oh yeah. you visit this water park, visit yes. this alligator, you know, place, you know, whatever. But very few places in the palm of your hand can you explore whatever you yeah. want see videos yeah. on it and purchase tickets right there my favorite you know was I mean? like, while i was in vegas and i was showing it to rick d who met up with me at the sand dollar him and his family came into town right. his daughter her girlfriend she was actually like hey where can i find lgbqt bars i'm yeah. like Hey, this is great. Let's put it in the search bar. I put it in the search bar, babe. The yeah, Phoenix yeah. came up. Everything came mm -hmm. up. I'm like, I didn't know I could do this. Like, yeah. this was really, I go, I'm learning with you right now. And she's like, this is fucking cool. Right. I go, I'm telling you, it's really neat. And it works better than I even know sometimes yeah. in some aspects. So, yeah, it was cool to get that. Yeah, so it's really cool to see that transition to, hey, you're selling something or advertising something to, oh, no. And she even, I go, hey, if you need me to, I can turn it off, you know, the backpack. It's not, a, she's like, no, honey, you're fine. Don't worry right. about it. It's okay. You're, you're told, just keep doing your thing. Forget I even bothered you. It's like, no, oh, that's awesome. I appreciate you. So it's all, I'm always weary about people's reaction, but that was a really cool inter yeah. interaction, yeah. All right, so one of the next places I wanted to cover is a place we've mentioned a little bit about before is the salsa land which is the salsa latin night over at sand dollar that they yeah. have so this is located in the plaza one of my favorite places but i actually got to see how this whole salsa night 
this salsa land thing works out. It's pretty unique, okay? So if you're in a dancing, this is an event for you. If you have a significant other or partner you wanna take and just have a good time, this is it. So from what I remember, the tickets are 10 bucks, right? Now this thing starts, I believe it was at six or seven. So they have these instructors that teach you lessons in the first hour. They're with you on the dance floor. Everybody's there doing step-by-step -step instructions. They show you the five different salsa versions you can dance, yeah. right? And it's not just one quick lesson and go do your thing. It's a full-on 30-minute hour session teaching you how to do this stuff. Then it goes into like the next half hour, an hour. It's basically they're playing music and now you're moving to all the, the songs and doing the different styles right getting in your zone getting comfortable <laughs> right so as that's happening these instructors are husband and wife right and they're re really good at dancing obviously and they know everything so now they're like working in between the couples and switching people and taking people's men and women right and they're dancing with them and so now everybody's just dancing with everybody, stranger with stranger, and everybody's just having fun, right? And everybody's smiling and having a great time. This is going on for the first two hours. Then the next hour, it like changes up. Your full band comes in, lights are put up everywhere around the sand dollar provided by this company, right? The music's going, the light and atmosphere is like a full on club environment. It's freaking fun, right? All these people that were learning in the beginning hours yeah. are now dancing on the dance floor in between everybody else and switching partners and the people on stage, they had like five guys dancing in the same rhythm and choreograph. Like it was freaking cool all happening inside the sand dollar. This place was packed. You had people laughing and coming over to the bar all sweaty just because they hadn't been stopped dancing the last few hours. This thing went all night and it was freaking fun just to sit and yeah. people. I didn't even dance and I had a lot of fun watching. Like it was super cool. If you're looking for something to do, this is it. Like yeah, I was like, like yeah, it was pretty freaking impressive. <laughs> I was like, man, more people got to know about this. And at the sand dollar, it yeah. doesn't get any better. Plus, we mentioned the sand dollar. I mentioned in the last episode that right now, if you're using the Vegas Near Me app, you can get 50% off any of the pizza that they do there. So you can now, when visiting the sand dollar, use the Vegas Near Me app. And when you buy any beer, cocktail, any drink in there, you can get half off the pizza just showing the app. So again, it's a great deal. You, you can't go wrong with that pizza downtown. Oh, made by pop-up. Up there with some of the best. Yeah. Well, when it comes to downtown, it's up there with the best. Another place I went to go check out was the Ojos Loco Sports Cantina y Casino. Ooh. Yeah, this place, definitely a step up from what it used to be as the Lucky Club. To make matters even better, I showed up to the new Mexican themed casino with the Tampico. That's right. And I walked into this place <laughs> not thinking much of it, but like the first thing I noticed, the rewards desk. It's called Jefe Rewards, Boss Rewards, right? <laughs> so everything's themed Latino in there. And the restaurant, the cantina, is really big. Takes up like the whole almost left half of the casino. And then over everywhere else is slots and stuff. Really big area for watching sports and stuff like that. But day and night from what it used to be. Again, when I went the first time, it was dingy, dark. It, yeah. it was it was later already. I did go during the day, but just the people outside hanging around in the yeah. parking lot. Like there's very area there's very few areas where it's kind of sketchy for me because I'm from the ghetto. <laughs> so <laughs> when I go to a place and I'm like, okay, this is where you got gotta put your hand on your wallet. Like that was one of those places. But now shitload of security. They're real strict on what you wear in there, no gang colors yeah. and stuff like that's been coming up a lot lately, yeah. but yeah, very cool spot. They did like these drinks on the table. It was a big soccer ball. Inside the soccer ball was this big tube and it was filled up with beer. And these two guys are just pouring out of these spouts and drinking their beers. That's like it cool. was, it was really, it was a cool spot. All new slot machines, shitload of TVs all alongside the wall. So if you're there for sports, you're having yeah. a meal. I mean, you, you really can't go wrong. It's just, uh, these are one of those places, not in the best area, right. you know, but it sounds Since, like a good spot to check yeah, out. Yeah, it's a yeah. really good spot. Definitely worth a look. Mm -hmm. So staying on the subject of new places, I then left immediately there and went over to the new wildfire on Fremont. Now, again, this is not downtown. This is not over with all the other casinos. This is out by itself. Yeah. And 
a really small place. If you think of the sizes of the casino downtown, think of a quarter <laughs> of oh. its size. It's really yeah. small, but they packed a shitload of machines in there. There's a little sports betting area. There's a couple food options, IHOP and the Tacos El Pastor. Once I finished up work, getting everything gathered there, that way when people look on the maps, they know where everything's at. I tried Tacos El Pastor because I was like, you know what? I haven't tried this place. I hear a lot about these tacos, and right? We have a lot of a lot of them around Vegas. Right? Yeah, so there's a few of those tacos El Pastor, but there's another restaurant chain that's really popular is Tacos El Gordo. Right. Right next door to each other on the strip, and they also have a bunch of franchise restaurants. Right. Yeah, so I'd never tried tacos, anything at this place. I'd never been. And I thought to myself, I should do a video comparing these two taco places against each other, and then I realized there's a shitload of those out there already. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, these two places are beloved. But I did try this place inside of Wildfire. I grabbed a taco and I grabbed a burrito, right? And I'm like, oh, I'm going to try a taco, see what it's about. What kind of meat did you get? Um, I got uh, carnitas. Okay. And really good, really tender, really fresh tortilla, really small. Two, three bites, you're done. Okay. Burrito, phenomenal. You love burritos. I love yeah. burritos, but this thing was packed. Plenty of guacamole, rice and beans. Yeah, I got their chicken. Uh, I think it was like a chicken fajita burrito. This thing ridiculous pack i even only ate half of it and then saved the other half for right. later on in the night it was that big plenty of salsas lemons it was really really good and i see why the salsas i know you like hot the salsas are really good they're but not not too hot yeah okay. so yeah i do like hot though but yeah i definitely go back and i think that's a place we should check out in the future just because it's so beloved <laughs> yeah so and i like tacos i know you yeah. like tacos so wouldn't think it'll work out heck yeah one of the following days i got to meet up with jordan from the show me vegas youtube channel who was in town it was just him solo and he's like hey jay i'm gonna be doing a live stream you want to join me i'm gonna be walking on the strip i'm like yeah i'll join you so i go show up meet up with him at a uh, aria and we walk over to the volcano go check out the show show it on his live stream uh walk through the forum shops over at caesar's check out the fountain show at bellagio and just talking as chat but what he started doing which is i didn't expect started advertising the Vegas Near Me app on his live stream, yes. which which I thought was really cool. And I like I had no idea he was going to do that, but it went from that. And that was like our first time ever actually like hanging out. We've right. met up, had a drink, but we didn't, you know, we were with other folks. So we didn't really get that one-on-one -on -one conversation. I hung out with this guy for like three hours that night. Afterwards, he tells me, he's like, Jay, I'm going to Ellis Island tomorrow night. And I've never been. He's like, I'm going to the Village Pub. Have you ever been there? I'm like, Pfft. I'm there like five nights a trip. Are you serious? He's like, really? I go, I do. That's my favorite place to go. And like, that's probably the most consistent place in Vegas. If yeah. you ask me, he's like, and budget friendly. He's like, dude, I had a blast tonight. Would you join me tomorrow and show me the ropes? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. So we did a whole nother video of Ellis Island, the village pub, why you should go and check that place mm -hmm. out. The benefits of getting a player's card for your meals right. and your gambling. Right. So it was just really cool to see him open up and be like, dude, you walked in the front yard. He's like, this is cool. Cool. Right. This is neat. I go, look, they can eat over it's here in this little. Yeah, it, it's really awesome. And, and Ellis Island, again, cheap gaming right. options, great food options, mm -hmm. and just a really cool spot to be at. And to see him light up, he's a strip person. He, they don't really do downtown, so they are always the strip. Isn't and to it see so him, funny? Like, yeah, you, know, you have people when you meet them, yeah. they're like, yeah, oh, I only like the stripper. Yeah, or, yeah. Or I only like downtown. And it's not to say they yeah. only, but the majority of the right. time stay there. But okay. yeah, I love. What I love is that people are willing to explore. Right. Yeah. yeah, and it seems like they know I go to places. Yeah. So they're like, Jay, you want to go? I'm like, I'll already be there. What do you mean? Let's go. I'll be there. Yeah. So it was really cool. We had a great meal. Did a whole separate video of Alice Island and the prime rib and the steak special. Nice. Showed the uh, fish and chips that they do there. And then one of my favorites, the chicken fried chicken. Right. So I look like an animal with all these dishes, <laughs> but I wanted to show some of the different options they do and why you should go. So, yeah, that place, the village pub over at Alice Island, just awesome spot. The next story happened right after I left Jordan that night, though. This is the hot dog guy story. I talked a little bit about it on the last episode. This dude comes running by me with his hot dog cart as I noticed that the police were checking on somebody over by the fountains. And immediately, as I noticed, the guy with the hot dog cart, because they're now all out there vending and selling bacon-wrapped hot dogs, he's jamming down the road. He's flying, pushing his hot dog cart. 
I look back to what's happening and I see those police officers are now walking this way looking for him, right? So they're making sure there's no vendors. He take he took off and booked it, right? I looked down where he was running, he was gone already. There's these two guys standing up against the wall. We're now watching the cops walk by us and they're flashing the light on us, like, hey, did you guys see a guy run by this way? And we're like, No, nope, didn't see nothing, right? And so that guy's gone. They can't see, they're still walking down. They end up coming back, right? And we're laughing and they were jokingly looking at me, babe, and they're like, oh, he was with them. He was with the hot dog guy. I'm like, no, that's your guys' friend, man, right? And so we're cracking up. And I love this about strangers, right? So we're cracking up. Well, here comes the cops. And so we, like, stop laughing, right? And so <laughs> the cop shines his light on, on, on them, on, like, their clothes, and then he shines it over at me. And then he shines, he's like, are you guys, are you sure you guys weren't with them? I'm like, no, we were, no, what are you talking about, right? I don't know what you're talking about. A guy shines his light down. There's fucking a box of hot dogs on the floor that the guy dropped. <laughs> we looked down and we laughed so hard. Like, we were like, oh my. And they were right by their feet and I could not stop laughing, babe. I took a picture of the fucking hot dog box. Yeah, I was like, dude, found dinner tonight. But yeah, these guys were cracking up because they're like, no, we're not with them. They, they looked down. They didn't even realize. Yeah, it was right there next to them. Just too funny, man. The shit that you see happen in real time he dropped his hot dogs dropped his hot dogs yeah that was hilarious let's talk about an awesome food option i tried i finally made my way over to kraken cafe i visited this place twice throughout this trip the first time i went just to get a taste and try the place get to know the owners i had an idea about them already but i wanted you know go down and meet them i went down there babe these guys were super cool they're a couple they had started on the strip together in a restaurant Ended up opening up their own food truck for about eight years. Now have their brick and mortar together, yeah. run this place together. Both chefs, right? Kayla and Elijah. These guys were super cool. I went in there asking questions about the business, right? For the app side of stuff and including them in everything. And then they were like, in return, they're like, listen, you're going to add us in there. I was like, I, you already invited me out here a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if you realize that. And she's like, really? I was like, yeah, I actually run a YouTube channel as well. And she's like, Oh, shit. And so it went from not only getting their information in the app, they were so blown away by the app. They put up our decals inside yes. of the building by the register, our business cards all over the restaurant in the front door, our placards showing the Vegas near me app with QR codes and stuff. And we're even going to be running a special with them and have a deal in the app for them as well. Nice. It's a two for $22 lunch special where you can go down and try their stuff. These guys cook everything from scratch when i tell you from scratch they make their own buns that's how Ooh. authentic this place is they're making them every day all day and these things are massive you bite into the bun it's like a hawaiian roll right okay. tears apart it's got that buttery flavor yeah. super great add burger ingredients to this thing <laughs> right oh my god babe so i tried four different items bison burger which was like a calamari ring bacon just stacked they're one of their featured special burgers phenomenal Cooked perfectly, seasoned, everything. Great. That was the first trip. The next trip, I went back to make the video. Throughout the video, I had their Thousand Island Burger, fish sandwich, and then I tried their French Toast Chicken Strip Sandwich. The Thousand Island Burger cooked perfectly. Even had a guacamole on it, which I didn't expect. Perfect, right? Fish sandwich. I'm not a big fish person, but this thing was cooked perfectly. Seasoned perfectly, fresh, right out of the fryer. Great, right? on point then we get to the french toast chicken strip sandwich right <laughs> sounds like a rap song this this thing's coated with powdered sugar fresh bacon strips inside right everything serve it with syrup right this thing babe was the the winner of all of them yeah. this thing was so sweet salty hot yeah. fresh because everything just blended together it was perfect and like chicken and waffles with french toast yes right? it was it was awesome but a sandwich version right. so and like that's what i said yes instead of the i wouldn't get fries yeah. because i think it's so yeah, yeah so it's already so sweet and right. then the fries it would maybe help it but like yeah the salt I, might count yeah, yeah so but i mean for the most part this thing everything i had there was on point and again meeting the owners and when you get to meet authentic people their daughter was there one of the days i went back right that just goes to show how family orientated right. they are like that 
just cook with a lot of love. Yeah. And I was like, man, I'm going to send people here as much as I can. And yeah, so we have a deal coming up with them too in the app. I, I yeah, want to take it. It's, it's fuck, it is so that good. Is on my to-do list. Yeah, now. it is so good. I put the video up on YouTube. If you're curious, go check out all this stuff. Yeah. This place was kick ass and it's right behind the MSG sphere. I mean, it's right off the strip too. Yeah. So once the MSG sphere gets going, hopefully. This is one of the places that was already went super viral because because Keith Lee visited there yeah. after Frankincense and, boy, and loved really, it. Yeah, oh, anything, well, anything. Yeah, he tries yeah anything he tries. Yeah, people benefit from his yeah. experience. And, and that just happens. goes back to show to authentic, right? Genuine, yes. authentic, and that's what he does with his reviews. He's just he's very straight up about what he likes, and when he doesn't just when he doesn't like something, he says that. So let's talk a little bit, and we covered this one too on the Patreon side. Was the first XFL game that I had went to and what my yes. experience was like. Now, I was excited to go. Tickets were only 22 bucks. And you went to the inaugural game. Yeah, I went to the very season yes. opener and we got drenched on. It was pouring left and right, right? So not only was it pouring like crazy, yeah, the game was basically drop pass after drop pass after missed tackle after drop pass after missed tackle. It was like watching a very bad high school football game. And I, and I hate to say that, but at the end of the day, it wasn't entertaining because we were waiting in right. coldness and, and waiting right, for something yeah. to happen, right? The game score was 7-0 the whole time to the midway of the third quarter right. where Vegas finally lost it in the fourth quarter. It ended up being that they ended up getting their first win this past weekend. And I remember going and telling you, I was like, you know, would I go back? Probably I wouldn't rush to because there's just so many different options so to go to. Yeah, maybe not, to. Maybe not this that. season. Maybe they get it together. Yeah. But it did bring up the interesting question of going to check out one of the Nighthawk games. This is the indoor arena football team. And from what I've heard from like three or four different locals that this is super fun because it's indoor. It's all so close. And right. sometimes the players are getting lit up. Balls go in and they stands all the time. You get to keep them. Yeah. And th the players end up in your lap. Sometimes they're like, it's fun. It's super cool. Not expensive again. And it's around the same price mark. And great for families i'm like see that's maybe something more along the lines i should check out it's indoors can't get rained on right. and it's just weird that it rained so hard that night and that didn't make a difference in the game believe me i was willing to, we waited most of right. the game out and i'd went with uh i'd met up with a friend from vegas and even at the third quarter i looked at him he was like you know i ubered over here i'm like you want to ride i'm ready if you're ready he's like yeah so yeah by the midway third quarter we about had it and there's little rules difference right so yeah. you got to know those going into it because at one point i think we were going for a three and i'm like what the hell is happening we're doing what yeah so there's a little bit of rule changes but would i go back this season probably not but I can tell that they're really hurting for people because the marketing team has been on it, like reaching out through yeah. Instagram and Facebook and emails like, yeah, hey, you well, said there's so much going on in Vegas. Right I now. think like, that's it. The smaller things, smaller, are, yeah, smaller things to do are really taking a push to the side. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Because there's so many more options right now. There's just so much available. So. Let's talk about a really funny one. So following that night, I had went to the plaza to go meet up with some friends, Rick and his family at mm -hmm. Sand Dollar. While I got in the parking garage and I park, I'm not even out of the car yet. Every now and then I like to take a puff, get myself right, right? So while I'm doing this, <laughs> this makes it even better. While I'm doing this, I literally put my stuff away. I got my backpack zipped up i'm getting ready to face the door and open the door handle and i'm looking at this guy walk up to my car right and i'm in the parking garage right and at first instinct i'm like fuck security right uh -huh. that's always and even though it's legal i'm always like oh fuck right that's just always a reaction of mine it's always been the way i've always been that way with marijuana always right so this guy's walking up to my car and i'm like oh fuck <laughs> But he's got a circa jacket on, right? And so now he's got his keys out, and now he's got his key in my door, and he's trying to wiggle this thing open. I pop my door open. I'm like, bro, what the fuck you doing? He's like, whoa, whoa. Then I realize I scared the shit out of him. A big old cloud comes up, right? Yeah. And he's like, uh, I go, what are you doing, dude? And he's like, he's looking at me. He's like, what are you doing in my car? I'm like, dude, what are you doing, right? And he's like, uh. And he's giving me this look of distraught. He's yeah, he's like he's, he's like, he can't what? figure out what's going yeah. on. I'm like, what are you doing, dude? Why are you trying to get in my fucking car, right? And so he's like, dude, 
I have the same exact car, same oxidation on the back of my trunk, same rims. I'm going to get my car. I'm going to bring it right now. So you see that I'm not bullshitting you. And I'm like, what? He was parked three cars over, pulls out in reverse and comes over. Same exact year, same exact color, same exact oxidation, same rim, same window tint, same everything crazy. to a T. What crazy. are the options, right? right? What and are the he, odds he's like, that yeah, yeah. What are the, the odds? Same floor. Three stalls. He's apart. looking at me like, dude, I am so sorry. I'm like, I'm laughing it off, right? He's like, dude, like, I am so, I'm going, dude, what are the fucking odds right, of this happening? Exactly. And he's like, yeah, he's all, you have the same exact it's trunk crazy. oxidation. He, so that's why when he was like, I go, dude, what are you doing in my car? He's all, are you sure it's your car? I'm like, now I was getting pissed off. Yeah. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, looking at the trunk after he, then he looked at your plates. And then he looked at my plates and he's like, California. California. Yeah. I'm like, what? He's like, now nah, this ain't my car. Watch. And he went to get his car and purposely show me, look, this is my car. I've never had that happen. That's crazy. Crazy, yeah. right? Yeah. Pretty freaking funny. I couldn't make that one up. But either. you know, it doesn't, it doesn't make you wonder at all. Like, if you weren't in the car, like, would he have tried His key to- didn't open. His key yeah. didn't open the door. Yes, I, that's why I waited. Like, I was kind of waiting yeah. to see what this guy going to do because right. I'm going to shit on his parade, right? right? But yeah, it didn't work. So then I popped out and really made him shit his pants. But yeah, no, I thought I, I waited for that exact yeah. moment because you hear of that. Mm-hmm. Cars, same so, keys, so, yeah, they work. The older ones, yes. They would open yes. other cars. Yeah. And, and I posted it on social media and I got that same exact response yeah. of people who were like, we once jumped into somebody's right. car or somebody jumped into my car. One guy even said he started a car and it wouldn't start all the way, but it turned the radio on. Really? Yeah. That's then he's like, crazy. this is weird. And he said he stepped out of the car and realized there was baby stuff in the back. So he's like, this is not my car. <laughs> yeah. And then you get scared. Like, I hope they don't think I'm stealing, stealing their car. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Things just can go through your mind. Like, yeah. What? Just crazy. Here's yeah. another funny one. This one made us laugh. Now, I got to give Graham from Chef Demoni a huge shout out because he submitted a clip for us to share. And his side of the story, right? But this all happened at Bacon Nation. Right. <laughs> we went to go meet up for the 360 podcast winter vacation meetup yeah. they were doing over there for dinner. George actually was like, hey, Jay, they're going to dinner this night. You're in town. We're going. I'm like, wait, this, okay. Yeah, let's go. Right. And so he's super excited because he's never been to Bacon Nation. Right. He wanted to go and he wanted to meet Mark and Karen from 360, right? Because he listens. Yeah. So we go to this event. And now we have about nine of us. There's supposed to be, I think, 20, maybe 30, right? Well, we show up. Everybody's having a good time. We all say hi to each other. And I notice it's a bunch of friends. And immediately sitting across from me and George was Graham and his wife, B, right? Mm -hmm. And so we're sitting there at the end of the table. We're all ordering our food. They all ordered the reverse BLTs. Because that's what they're known for, right? Bacon each is known for that. Yeah. So, and I order a chicken club because I want to be different. And so, (laughs) so you've already had it. Yeah. No, we've already. I've already had it. And then we tried some. I think it was bacon wrap pickles, which too salty. Don't do that. And the other one was oh three flavors of bacon, which we barely put a dent in because we were trying to finish our food. But me and George, we noticed after we ordered, there was two servers. Okay. Now they were anticipating a bigger party, right. which they gave us their own back room for ourselves, and which was really nice. The owner came out, said hi, and stuff, which was great. Yeah. So when going to any of these group events, have you ever felt obligated? I guess I should say to pay right away. Never. <laughs> and I only mention this because we had two different servers taking care of the group, right. and I think because we were having a bigger group, they anticipated two servers splitting it up, whatever. Well. The two servers, one took the seven of us and Graham's server took them two, right? Immediately after they placed their order, an interesting event happened where she basically asked them if they're ready to cash out. (laughs) But let's throw Graham's clip in here so he can share his version because he submitted a clip to us for us to share and for you guys to have his firsthand perspective of it. So let's enjoy this. Hey, Jay, it's Graham here from the Chef Demoni podcast. I was listening to one of your Patreon episodes recently where you shared some great stories, you know, things that can only happen in Vegas, but but they're stories that you might forget if you don't record them right away. 
And that got me thinking about our recent dinner at Bacon Nation, where my wife B and I, we were there, we got to catch up with you and your colleague George and lots of great folks who were there as part of the meetup that Karen and Mark from the 360 Vegas podcast had organized. And and I thought the 360 crew had done a great job. They got us a private room at Bacon Nation where we could all sit together. And that, of course, is a little unusual. I mean, you would know this as a chef. Usually restaurants, they want a deposit or a joint check or something for larger bookings. But Bacon Nation was great. They were happy to let everybody pay their own checks, and they put us all together in this private room. And as you'll probably remember, I'm sure you'll remember, our group had two servers. And the woman who was looking after B and me, she was super friendly and helpful. She was great. But she was also almost strangely diligent to the point that as soon as she took our order, she asked me if I wanted to settle the tab. I I don't think we even had our drinks by then. But I figured, okay, sure, maybe that's the way they want to do it with this big group. So... I was reaching for my wallet, but then the group was saying, no, we might order more drinks, we can all settle up at the end, and, and our server seemed fine with that, but, but basically every time she came near the table, she asked me if I wanted to pay, and so I was starting to wonder if they'd somehow run a credit check and maybe my report came back with some bad news. And of course, Julie and you were joking that we might flee the joint at any minute, we looked like a real security risk, these two Canadians. So finally, finally, after many check-ins from our server, everybody seemed to be paying their bills, and, and so I did too, I paid ours, and that is when the penny dropped. The other server at the table had all the other people at this huge table. And our server was only looking after me and B. So maybe we were her last table of the whole night or something, in which case, fair enough, she'd want to head for home. <laughs> anyway, it was a bit of a strange experience. I have never before been asked for payment that frequently and that early in a restaurant experience. <laughs> and I am definitely glad my credit card wasn't declined when I finally did go to pay the check. It was one of those awesome moments that are, you know, just so good for a laugh with friends, and those moments sure do seem to happen a lot in Las Vegas. Anyway, Jay, it was great to see you, my friend. I just wanted to share that story with you while it is still fresh in my mind. Thank you to you and Kelly for all the great content you put out on Vegas Confessions, and if any of your listeners are thinking about jumping onto the Patreon level to become a supporter... I absolutely say go for it. There's so much fun on Patreon, and, and to me, it just feels good to support a channel that I really like. All right, until next time, my friend. So we talked a little bit about this on the Patreon side of the podcast, but what were your thoughts after hearing this right away? Now, we talked about it, and then he just happened to send me this clip the next day, but right. what were your thoughts immediately? Well, I was just trying to figure it out, like, from... A server perspective. Yeah, right. My perspective on it from having, you know, experience in the restaurant field is that, like, they were expecting 30 people and only nine showed up. Yeah, right. So they probably scheduled two servers to take care of this yeah, right. party that's in the back room, isolated. By itself, anyways. right. Yeah. yeah. And so it's it's a high probability this extra server was like, oh, I'm not going to get any tables. <laughs> like, maybe they were like, if you want to just take those two and go home. You know, or yeah, something. Right. Yeah. But it's not like they could, you know, keep them get, or give her more tables because they were already in a back room. Right. You know, so that's my perspective, you know, because usually that doesn't happen. And she probably could have explained something because there's probably something going on to that effect. Yeah. You know, and then you guys kept making fun of him. They're like, oh, he's going to take off. Do you think he's going to take off? Yeah. George kept making the joke <laughs> like, they're still here, guys. They're still here. But yeah, we thought that was interesting because it never had seen that happen. Right. We've been to a lot of different places. And I mean, there's even places where you go and you pay for your stuff right away, and that's right. fine. But when you go to a sit down restaurant, right. and you're you could even add more drinks and stuff, right? Like that was a big, big uh, eye opener for us. When that's she was like, "You ready to cash out?" Something like yeah. that, that was occurring because there wasn't as big of a yeah. party, so there wasn't anything for right. that server to do. She want to make sure she get her tip. Right. Yeah, I could see that one. But yeah, that that's the difference in us coming from the restaurant industry is we no, could see exactly. that. Yeah, but in the beginning, like we were giving them <laughs> hell, man. Like we, him and B kept looking at each other. We, we didn't help because like, we just kept laughing. Wrong? Yeah, he's all he's always because like, we're Canadian or what's happening. Like it was great. It was great. Graham, anytime you want to have a meal, you and B, anytime, you know, brother. Yeah, but good, good time, great atmosphere, good people. Yeah, good time. The last place I have to mention, 
on this episode is going to be my number one stop before I leave Vegas anytime and I come back home. Yeah, I know. Every time well, you, you know. Leave. Yeah, Every you know. Every time you leave, it's like, got to hit the smoke. Got to hit the smoke shop. Got to hit the smoke shop. So Ooh. the yeah. reason, well, it's at the new location. Yeah. So this place is called the Paiute Indian Tribal Smoke Shop. This is the same location as the Nuwu place. And by the way, Nuwu just added a whole new building next door where their new cannabis dispensary is now. So they have the old location, but down on the bottom, they have this smoke shop. And right next to that is a cigar shop. It's all in Indian land, so they don't have taxes. taxes. So if you're going there, I kid you not, if you're going there to purchase smokes, I pay half of the price that I would pay here in California. And when I tell you I pay half of the price, what I can get there for $4 a pack, I can get here at $8 a pack. I am one of the people who follow these guys on their Facebook group as well. So on their Facebook group, you can get a coupon on per cartons or per packs for 2 to $3 off. Right. It always changes. There's always different brands on sale. If you're a smoker, this is definitely a stop you need to consider because it makes a difference in your funds, right? Yeah. If you're paying half the price, and if you're going as much as I do, right. I stock up before I come home. I pay, I think it's 40 bucks a carton. Right, which is... There's 75, so 80 bucks here. And with the savings that you're going to get, you can utilize that money for gas or for whatever else. But this place, if you're a cigar smoker, they have a whole place set up for cigars, humidifiers, anything. Vapes, if you're looking for vapes, vapes have been banned in California. So now everybody's going to Nevada to get all their stuff. And he had told me, one of my friends, Jose, who works there, you had a guy place a $35,000 order on the spot and he was coming to pick it up That's that week nuts. because California right. can't get any of the vape products. So people from California just going to grab it. Wow. Yeah, just crazy. So again, if you're looking to save money and you're looking for the deal aspect, I don't promote smoking or any of that. I smoke, but I'm going to be real when I give you, hey, there's a good way to save money. Right. I'm giving you this deal and tip for the deal side of it. And that's to save you money at this place. If you're a smoker, you want to check out this place. The Indian Tribal Smoke Shop over next to New, the cannabis dispensary. Not in the best area. I'm going to be honest. There's homeless in the area and stuff. But the security does a very good job of keeping, well, the security and the police, I guess I should say, do a very good job of keeping these people away. Right. They don't, they don't allow them anywhere on their property. Not at all. Yeah. So you'll never have a bad experience or interaction with people asking you for money at this place. This place, I've stopped at every single time I come home. You're I'm not exactly. Nice yeah. Guys. Super good people. I'm planning on doing a video. And I was always skeptical about it. Right telling people about this kind of stuff because I don't want people to, oh, fuck, Jay smokes, right? right? But there's a lot of people that do. Right. And there's even more people that like saving money. So right. I know what that's like and I get that <laughs> side of it. So again, I wanted to share with you guys. And for this week's episode, that's going to be it. We have another huge episode where we got to talk right. about something that blew our mind the other night. Right. We almost got scammed for a few thousand dollars in a new way that we never knew existed. Traumatized me. Give them a little tip of the iceberg. Tip of the iceberg is I was asleep on Saturday night and woke up to a phone call from Georgia. And when I answered the phone, they tell me that my child is in jail. Right. She had been arrested with just under an ounce of weed and there was open containers in the vehicle. They had had her in a detox tank and they wanted money to get her out. Now, us were like, yeah, okay, well, let's get it taken care of. And there is a whole nother side to this whole story. And we even got the guy on the phone and we're going to be bringing it to the podcast here because you guys have to listen to this one. And now, mind you, if you watch some of the scammer videos out there and some of the different channels on YouTube, I watch them all. So I already knew what we were going to do when this guy called back. (laughs) You guys have to listen to this, though, because you have a child that's in college. If you have a family member that's in college, this is very important because it seems like they're targeting college students right now. Right. Whether they're athletes or not, it doesn't seem to matter because from what we've learned is this is an ongoing thing and there's already police and investigators on this because this has been popping up. So it's going to be a very interesting listing of how we almost got scammed for a few thousand dollars the other night. Yeah, it was crazy. It, it was really crazy. We were, we were we stood up real late like, what the fuck just happened? Yes. And yeah, yes. and because the authorities here wouldn't really help us or do anything about it, 
We took care of it. <laughs> We're bringing it to YouTube. Yes, that's exactly right. Bringing it to you guys, bringing it to YouTube, all that good stuff. And speaking of YouTube, if you want more stuff, definitely check out the content over on the YouTube channel. We've been putting stuff on. If you're our Patreon members, make sure you're over on the Patreon side because we're putting out stuff on that side as well. We're going to Vegas in about a week and a half. We're going to be doing some in real time recordings while in town. And I'm super stoked because all of these places I talk to you about, we can actually shoot to some of these places. Yeah. That'll so be fun. It, it'll be fun for you to get your first hand experience and see how genuine these people are. So yeah. I'm excited about that. But again, super fun episode this week. Thank yeah. you for joining us. We'll be back with more update stories, topics. You know it. So until the next time, my friends, do us a favor. Give us a follow on all social media platforms. Check us out on YouTube. And until the next time, we will see you soon. Cheers. Cheers.